Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Bowling League's Chaos Cup Week Number One, the final game of the first week of competition. Boy, it's it's been a doozy. <laughs> it's been a doozy. <laughs> so if you're unaware, Blood Bowl Three does not have <laughs> league management tools in place, and we have had. <laughs> We've had to get creative with things, but enough about that right now. Tonight, we've got a really good matchup. It's going to be uh, Bash versus Agile tonight. And tonight, it's going to be Maximum Von Cito versus Real American Heroes. Malak versus Dead Fred. Uh, Lizards versus Dark Elves. Let's take a look at the standings. Five game or five game streak, five stream streak. Thank you very much, SB Beaver. <laughs> Currently tied for first place. Glyphes is Nuffle to see here. Chaos chosen team. They won this week two to zero. As did I want to be like Doug. Richard Cranium's Dwarven team and the juxtaposed Juggernauts Chaos Renegade team by War Horseman in fourth place is Stairway to Nuffle coach by El Duberino. That was an Underworld Des uh, Denizens team that won their game last night three to two. First up, the home team, Maximum Bond Cito. There better be a, a Ming the Emperor here. Or Emperor Ming. Ming the Merciless. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> a lizard team going to the TV of 1 million gold. Six Saruses, five Skinks. That's about uh, that's about typical for a lizard team. Some, some coaches start with a croc, some don't. I think you want to get all six blockers, and uh, Malik has done just that. He's going to start with just two rerolls. And he does have the apothecary. Not a whole, not a whole lot going on here. You can see not a lot of skills. Just the dodge skill and the stunty trait on the skink. No skills whatsoever on these Saris blockers, but they do have the strength of four. They're going to be up against Dead Fred's Dark Elf team here. Real American heroes. GI Joe. GI Joe. Yes, G.I. Joe. <laughs> Four blitzers on this Dark Elf team. A runner and everybody else is aligned. And these Dark Elves are very, very strong. Well, I shouldn't say strong. They're very, very good positionals. Lots of speed. Their slowest player is MA6. AG2 across the board as Elves tend to be. Uh, they, they can pass as well. They have an AV of nine plus across the board, except for the runner, of course, that has the eight plus that makes them a little bit more strong uh, as opposed to some of their other uh, elven brothers, say like uh, wood elves that tend to be AV eight. Uh, SP Viewer says, I forgot two plus is good in this rule set. Yeah, it's flipped. It's, this is like, this is like the Thacko. <laughs> it's like, it's like the elimination of Fako in Blood Bowl. <laughs> four Blitzers, they all come with the Block Seal. That is absolutely fantastic to start with not two, but four players that have the Block Seal. He does have Duke the Runner as well that has Dump Off here. And that means that should he be the target of a block or, or a skill that replaces block, in other words, a skill that you can do in lieu of a block, say a stab, uh, he can interrupt that block or, or stab or whatever and throw a short pass. Or a quick pass, rather. I think it's a quick pass. Yeah, just throw a quick pass. Uh, that's great. <laughs> that's really good. Especially when you have a PA of three plus, you have an AG of two plus, you, you have speed, right? So you can get your runner to where he, where you want him to be. And if it doesn't work out, if he's about to take that block, you say, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna chuck this ball. I'm gonna chuck this ball to one of my, one of my two plus players. Running game, passing game, four players with block, really good lineup here for Real American Heroes. Not a bad lineup for Malik as uh, either here tonight. The problem, of course, with Lizards is when they start out, they just don't have those skills. So he does have the six Saruses with a strength of four. That is a ton, a ton of strength. And that's, uh, he's he's gonna need to, to leverage that, right? So here's, here's the big problem with this roster, that AG5+, plus. <laughs> that's the problem with all this strength. Strength four means he'll get that two die block AG5 means he's not getting away if he's marked. So he needs to be careful that these Saruses don't get marked. Um, and so he can't get them to where he wants them to be. He also needs to protect these Skinks. These Skinks only have a strength of two. They have an AV of eight plus. They do have dodge, but they are they are stunty. And uh, it's easy to remove them from the pitch. And <laughs> most importantly, there is only AG3 plus players. So these are the only players that could really handle the ball this evening for Malik. He does have five of them. He needs to be careful with them. I think Malik tonight 
it's it's going to be tricky. He doesn't want to just throw all the sources on the line and be done with it, because Dead Fred will just mark some of those some of those sources. He won't be afraid to mark some of those sources and just try to try to spread them out, try to make them ineffective, try to pull them away from the drive. And uh, if, if Malik's not careful, it'll be real easy for Dead Fred to do that tonight, especially with those four blitzers. Malik, on the other hand, he's going to want to leave some Saruses free. Now, he does have six of them. That means he can both control the line if he wants to control center pitch, but he can also pull some Saruses back into a, a linebacker position or a running back position uh, and, and be able to keep them mobile and put them where he wants to put them. He'll want to take key blocks, key marks. He won't want to just mark everyone uh, it, because he only has six players that that aren't fragile. <laughs> so it's going to be real key for Malik where those sources are going to go and, uh, and and if he can keep them mobile or not. For Dead Fred, the, the conundrum for his team is if he is not ahead, in other words, if he's behind or if the game is currently tied, when do you score? It, it's, it can be tricky because you can score very, very quickly, but if you score too quickly, you're gonna give Malik an opportunity to get the ball back and potentially score again. So it's gonna be a real, real tricky decision there. I think it's one of the hardest decisions to make in the game of Blood Bowl. Um, we'll see if uh, Dead Fred can thread that. Uh, Dead Fred can thread that. <laughs> that line or not. <laughs> Thread that needle, that's what it is. Thread the needle. <laughs> or not. Uh, not terribly fragile. AV 9 plus is pretty average, so that's really good com uh, combined with that AG 2. Just has the two rerolls, but again, he's up against a team that only has two rerolls themselves. More importantly, he doesn't have the oppo on this roster, so anybody that's anybody that's gone, they're gone. <laughs> so he's gotta it's gonna have to be careful there. And we'll see if uh we'll see if Malik will try to take advantage of that with a few fouls here or there. Some some just uh, some key fouls. Maybe not, maybe so, we'll see. But without further ado, we'll get this game, uh, we'll get this game underway here. Fouling can be really risky if you don't have a bribe because you're gonna lose a player for the rest of the game. Um, but if you can take out a, a key player, if you can take out an important player, maybe you do it. If you can take, you know, <laughs> I think pound for bound, the elves, each elven player is more valuable to Dead Fred than each lizard player is to Malik. What is on Cabal Vision there? What is happening? <laughs> Sigma Sleep says, would Duke really dump the ball to someone else? <laughs> of course not. Of course he wouldn't. Duke took a snake to the heart. <laughs> Blood red dark elves. See who wins a coin toss here in just a moment. Fan factor four apiece for each coach here. I've noticed another bug in uh, Blood Bowl here. You see how it has the the name of the team and then in in smaller font it has the name of the coach. Watch it halftime. The smaller font will also be the name of the team. <laughs> Maximum Boncito is going to be on defense to start. Perfect conditions for tonight's game. Clear skies. Has to put three on the line on the line of scrimmage here. That's what this three plus means. Can only put a maximum of two players in either, either wide zone. That's what two minus means.
37 seconds left to set up his defense here. Maximum Boncito. Who else? Who else does he have? Every, they must all be characters that Max von Sydow has played, right? Yeah, some of these I don't know. Yeah, so that one I do know. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Seven seconds left. Three on the line here. He's keep. Wow, he's got one Sars as a safety. Pulls him up into a linebacker here. Giving up the sidelines. He's going to have to be real careful here. He does have the Skinks that have an MA of 8. They can catch him. Now what Malik might try to do on defense here is get a Skink into position to take a mark. All he has to do is hold up a player long enough to get that, that block with the Sars. So you, you might see him uh, uh, sacrifice, so to speak. Sacrifice a Skink to take a mark so he can get a, a uh, Saurus in there to take the block, take the blitz. Arrow offense here for the real American heroes. Five-man offensive line. He's going to need to get another player in on this line to start with if he wants to get the two dies. Otherwise, he might be taking advantage of uh, the block skill on a one die block to uh, to open up the two die block down the line. Here's the kickoff. Naturally, Duke back to receive. Fastest player on the roster with an MA of seven. All these blitzers have an MA of seven as well. There's five players with MA seven, everybody else has MA six. Nice kick, shallow kick. It's going to be a touchback. It's going in the hands of Duke, I wager. I wish there was an animation for touchbacks. Turn one now, yes, into the hands of Duke. Turn one for the real American heroes. Yeah, there's that mark to get the two-die block. He's going to start on the left side of the line here, it looks uh, this to be the case. There's the two-die block at the foul. Didn't need the block skill here. Get the ball to a mummy on accident. I thought you were just showing off. Breaks armor to get the game started. It's going to be a KO here. Malik deciding whether to use the up uh, the oppo or not. I imagine he, well, he he might. <laughs> I imagine he won't. Yep, one man player advantage. Got rid of a Saris. Big get there for real American heroes to start the game off. And now he's got two die blocks down the line. Oh, could have had two die blocks coming this way, but he's going to bring in another player on the right side of the pitch to get a two die block. Got a two die block with Destro against Ming the Merciless. The Emperor himself. Ball advances to uh, the Real American Heroes six yard line, right at mid pitch. I really love the G.I. Joe movie. Not not the live action movies, the, the old cartoon movie intro. <laughs> I think the intro is really cool. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. <laughs> It's like G.I. Joe and Cobra fighting on the Statue of Liberty with fireworks in the background. Another broken armor! Onosaurus gets a stun here. They're fighting on the Statue of Liberty and there's like fireworks and stuff. Two die block. Nine seconds left of the turn. Got another pal here. Can he break armor again? Ten plus is not easy. He does it again! Wow! This time gets a stun. Real American Heroes dipping into the reserve time. They have 7 minutes 30 seconds for the game. Two die blitz on the number 10 skink. 
Maximum Von Cito put all those skinks up in the linebacker position. One of them is getting blitzed. Rick's armor again gets a KO. Well done. First turn of the game and a two man player advantage for the real American heroes. Look at that line, all destroyed. And a skink removed as well. Turn one now for Maximum Von Cito. <laughs> Sigmar's loop says the skinks are screwing around with the SARS summer in the locker room. <laughs> Big loss here for Malik, losing two players because he really needs to cover the entire pitch against this, this fast team. He does have the speed advantage with the Skinks, but uh, boy, he doesn't, he doesn't want to throw them out there to die. Minutes go with no action here by Malik. Two die blitz to get things started. Oh, he has the royal blue dice. Lovely. He's gonna get a push result here. Those are marvelous. I love those. Got the matching dice. I got matching dice too, but I think his blue dice look better than my purple dice. Twenty seconds on defense here. Remember, he's got seven minutes, thirty seconds in reserve time. This is a bug here. It's not two minutes. I should probably refer to it as bonus time since the game refers to it as bonus time. Applying some pressure on this cage moves the number eleven skink into the backfield, and now maximum Boncito in bonus time. Number seven. Uh, the number seven lineman, Lassafar, who's in the safety position. As does Chief Justice Fargo. And that'll be the turn. Moves one more skink forward to get a an assist on Gung Ho. Interesting choice there. Doesn't need it. Gung Ho has a one dive block coming back if he wants it. Dad Fred, if he wants to stall out forward movement here, which he can afford to do, I mean, he he could blitz this player. He could bring in assist here and take the block on this skink. That's two skinks he could go after. Might not even stall it out. He could just shift, uh, shift his cage to the left wide zone. Looks like he's going to try to advance forward here. Going to get, get behind the defense. So he's going to move the cage here, and then he's going to pull some players in to try, try to mark players. Oh, it looks like a, a weird dancing person. <laughs> and uh, give him an opportunity to score next turn. Cage advances to the opposing 10-yard line. Got to be a little careful scoring early here. That'll give Maximum Von Cito almost an entire half to score again, and then they'll be on offense in the second half as well. My goodness gracious, breaks armor again, this time on the number five Saris blocker and gets a stun. Gets in the skink on the line of scrimmage. He'll get a push out of this. Yeah. 
Decides to follow up and keep, keep the uh, skink marked. If that skink wants to get away, it's going to be two dodges now. Unless the Saurus were to go after the lineman, but that's what Snake Eyes is for. He'll sneak up on you. <laughs> two die block. Both down result unless he re-rolls it. He only has two re-rolls. He takes the both down result. I was going to say, <laughs> that's not in his favor. I thought that Saurus got removed. Not in his favor. Lost the player on the both down result. One man player advantage now for the real American heroes. <laughs> I think the Ranger says these elves need to be tested for performance enhancing drugs immediately after this match. <laughs> Three Sauruses right here are all free to move. You see the rings are the inner rings on the players are the category of player. So a yellow player is a blitzer, a, uh, a gray or a white player is a lineman, the green players are runners, and the orange players are blockers. Declaring a blitz with Brewmeister Smith. Looks like he's going to try to blitz the back left corner of the cage here. He's going up against that block skill. Doesn't matter. He'll get the knockdown. Can he get the 9+. Is he going to follow up or not is the question. I imagine maybe not. Maybe he wants to reposition Zartan. Oh, he is going to follow up. Okay. All right, so he marks the ball carrier, but currently that ball carrier just has a two plus dodge away. Gets a skink in front of the cage. A second skink. The safety skinks in front of this cage. Seven seconds to go on the turn. He's got to do something with the number eight skink over on the left sideline here, or else uh, he'll risk a surf. Fails the rush. Only two rerolls. Is he going to reroll it? Oh boy, what a decision here. SP Beaver lowered the rush failure rate from 900% to 99%. Too late for Malik, though. Oh, he's really taking his time on this decision, but the clock keeps ticking. He's going to re-roll it. He's down to one re-roll. Takes a mark on the front right corner of the cage, but this ball carrier still has daylight. Ooh, not anymore. Well done. The Skink only has the strength of two, though. We could see a blitz with Duke. Can he make it? I think he can make it. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a GFI now to score. Six minutes left in bonus time for Maximum Vonsito. Real American Heroes turn three now. Over 30 seconds. Into, man, this time goes by fast. Two die block to get things started. Gets a push on Snake Eyes. <laughs> Signature like Loop says the Joe's call a blitz with Duke of Bloop. <laughs> Joe's, we need a plan. Duke, you know what to do. Gung Ho, what do you mean? It's time for the bluke. I think you might be right. Moving this ball all the way back to the 
<laughs> Back to the line of scrimmage to get the assist, to get the knockdown on the number two blocker. Whoa, whoa, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh! Got the knockdown there. Trying to cover the gap here to prevent a surf. Oh boy, I would dodge a skink in there. <laughs> I would dodge a skink in there. It'd be my last action. Well, not anymore. <laughs> well, now I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Good two plus dodge here by Zartan. I wonder why he pulled back here. Oh, you know what? He probably didn't want to score so quickly. That's why. That's why. He didn't want to lose his two to one. Wow, two good dodges. A three plus to a two plus. Turn three now for Maximum Boncito. MVS. Most valuable Cedo. <laughs> Most valuable Saurus. <laughs> it is, but I, I thought it was pronounced Cedo. Am I incorrect? Minute five left in turn three now for MVS. Takes a mark on Flint, the number 11 lineman over in the left wide zone with Brewmeister Smith. SP Beaver says, should I know this actor? The answer is yes. <laughs> yes, you should, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know like half the people on on your on your roster. <laughs> blitz to die blitz. Man, I love these dice. They're beautiful. Gets the knockdown on Flynn here. Looking for the nine plus. Malik should take the opportunity to regroup his defense here. Breaks armor, gets a KO, well done. All tied up on the pitch now, 9v9. He doesn't want to overcommit here because it's just going to give Dead Fred an opportunity to just mosey around the pitch for as long as he wants. Malik either needs to reposition to protect against the score, or he needs to get after this ball and try to recover it. And he's he's kind of doing a little of both. <laughs> J.R. Wilkes says, man, they are not concerned with that clock. No, they are not. <laughs> it's going to bite them. <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> Only Bruno says, I stand corrected. YouTube says it's Cito. Yeah, I thought it was Cito. Good, uh, thanks for uh, finding the confirmation. Heroes up in turn four now. They get the assist against King Osric, the number five, Saras. One die block currently. 
Might be trying to move this ball to cage up back at mid pitch. Now he's got the two die block. Gets a push result out of this. We'll see if he follows up or not. If he doesn't follow up, the ball's probably going to end up on the eight yard line. Yeah, so it doesn't follow up, so this ball's probably going to end up here. There's the cage. Fails the dodge. He'll he'll really want to reroll this. <laughs> there it is. Down to one reroll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can GFI or he can dodge. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> oh, I thought that was the ball carrier. I was like, what? <laughs> Back into bonus time now. Under 5 minutes, 30 seconds left for the real American heroes. Decided he didn't want a GFI here. Fair enough. This might be the turn, but he's got two other players left to, left to position. <laughs> it's like there's loop says, rush, you get further downfield. <laughs> roll dice, you're never going to knock someone down unless you roll dice. <laughs> Take that uphill block. Turn four, final turn of the first quarter now. Maximum Von Cito, MVS. They've got four skinks in the secondary. They've got three Saruses bunched up uh, just behind the ball over in the left wide zone. One is prone, way out of position. He'll get three movement out of him. There it is. And then he's got King Osric, who's been left behind as well. King Osric probably wants to come up here. I don't know who Blitz is going to be against. I guess against Destro, but that's a that's a suboptimal position. Maybe he comes in against Zartan on the Blitz, gets in here, shifts the secondary to the right, just a just a smidge. I don't know what they're chanting in the crowd. It sounds like USA, <laughs> but it can't be. <laughs> that would be silly. Come up the front, but doesn't take the blitz. Fair uh, Yeah, fair enough. That's still, that's a one die block with the dodge skill. Well, not anymore. Still got to cover the right side here. Back into bonus time. Blitzing the back left corner of the cage here. That's not going to work out. It's either a, a turnover or he's going to get knocked down here. Oh boy. What a tough call to lose the reroll here. But he's giving up. He's giving up all of this here. This big hole here. He decides to keep the reroll. Real American heroes. We're going to start thinking about scoring at this point. They can score right now if they wish to. Mm. 
No dodges, just one GFI with Duke. Looks like he's not going to score, though. He's going to try to stall this out for another turn. Advances Duke down, pitch into the right wide zone this time on the opposing 22-yard line. Now he's got he's to do something about these skinks. Get between them, mark them, do something. Saruses right now are not a problem for him because the Saruses, there's no reasonable way they're going to dodge away. So the only way they can get into position is by taking the blitz. And if they're taking the blitz, they're not taking it against the ball carrier. Elder Bruna says, are there two injured slash KO'd elves? There are. Two KO's. Trying to get the assist to prevent the skink blitz. Two die block behind the ball carrier here. It works out through the block skill. Snake Eyes gets the knockdown. Real American Heroes back into bonus time. Under five minutes left for the game. Good two plus dodge. Good positioning here to try to prevent the skinks. To try to prevent these skinks from looping around the front and getting the assists they need. Fudai Blitz takes out the number 11 skink here. Can you get the eight plus? Eight plus is not a lot. Doesn't break armor, got a five. Real American Hero is in decent shape here. Second quarter now uh, for MVS. You can see there's not a whole lot of options for these skinks to move now. <laughs> they could. They could dodge up here, lots of dodges, right? All of this, all of this space here, this is all dodge territory. All of this, all of this. Jared Wilkes says the score is happening, just kill some elves. I, I think that's the play. I think you'd want to try to apply a little pressure just to see if you can, because they, it is a lizard team. Those skinks are very fast. Uh, with enough time on the clock, with three turns, I think, I think Maximum Von Cito could could really end this half one to one if they can force the score. But uh, tough to do here. I think maybe they blitz down uh, the number eight lineman here, and then just fill this all in, fill it all in. Pressure dead Fred to score this turn. I, tell you, I can't recommend more. I can't recommend enough those Febreze heated oil things you plug in. They're fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Two die blitz. He's going to blitz Snake Eyes instead. This blitz isn't doing much for him. He's, he's just trying to take out a high dollar player, which is fine. But if he wants to force the score, this isn't doing much. Doesn't break armor. Man, I love those dice. I love those dice. And that'll be the turn. Ends it before he dips into bonus time. Real American Heroes might just take a blitz and stall for another turn here. No, pre no real pressure applied. These two will crumble. But so what? <laughs> so what? He can stand up Snake Eyes, two plus dodge him into position to get a second assist. He can take out at least one of these Saurus blockers. He can even take out two if he wants.
He's going to do just that. There's two assists now on King Osir. Now he can just stand up Snake Eyes uh, without, uh, without dodging, pulling everyone in. He's giving up a, a little bit of a little bit of zone here. He's setting his protection into a, a more traditional cage structure. <laughs> <laughs> Two nine block. <laughs> All he's gonna get is a push out of it. Oh boy, went real hard on that Saurus. You gonna dodge away shipwreck now? Yeah. Two die blitz. He'll get the knockdown here against Brewmeister Smith. Jared looks as isolated blitz or foul with a skink. The lizard team shouldn't go into the second half more than one skink. <laughs> Big commitment on these two Sauruses. It's gonna have to pull ship right back. Pulls him back onto the cage. Ooh, turn six. I say YOLO it. <laughs> That's well maybe not. I don't know. But if he doesn't apply pressure. So if Malik's not going to apply pressure here, and I think two turns might be cutting it close, uh, he needs to just focus on attack. He wants to get removals at this point. Ooh, taking a mark on the cage. This means he's going after the cage. Got to do something with that mark. He doesn't want to just leave that mark sitting there. Takes a second mark here. Spark's not doing much for him here because uh, number 11 is marked by Tomax. Got it on the Blitz. Two die Blitz. Not going to work out unless he spends the reroll, and I don't think it's. Well, actually, why not? It's turn six. <laughs> it's turn six. Saves the reroll here. That's going to be a turnover. Looks like real American heroes are going to try to stall this out till turn eight. They're going after some skinks. Two skinks at least. Two skinks definitely now. Three die block against the skink. He'll get the knockdown. Looking for a nine plus. Breaks armor. Oh, serious injury. Is the apple going to be spent here? That serious injury is going to make that skink even more. Oh boy, even more prone to injury. And he'll be out next game. Three die block gets a pal this time against number 11. Looking to break armor here as well. Gets a stun out of it. Wanted a little more there. Got a stun.
turn seven for MVS. Dead Fred gets the remainder of his team to protect the ball carrier. There's really nowhere for MVS to go here in turn seven. Yeah, if only, if only he had a fireball. Got a couple of marks against Zartan. I think he just wants to keep these two skinks safe at this point. Maybe just run them away. Run them down here. No action for a few seconds here. We know the coaches are experiencing some sort of input latency. Finally get a blitz declared here by MBS. Two die blitz. It's gonna be a push. Turn eight now for the real American heroes. Not much to do here except score and uh, take whatever blocks you can muster. With the input latency uh, question, this is a calculus that you're going to have to do, hopefully on <laughs> the previous turn. <laughs> How much is it worth it to spend your time figuring out what blocks you're going to take, <laughs> lest you run out of time? Looks like he's trying to set up a block here, or a blitz rather, on number two. He has two assists against number two currently. And there's the block. <laughs> oh no, he has to re-roll this. Oh boy, I think he learned his lesson here. <laughs> you think he learned his lesson? <laughs> we'll see if this knockdown's worth anything. It is not, I imagine his score here. And the Real American Heroes will take the lead in this game, one to zero. There it is, well done. <laughs> Did you catch that, by the way? Did you see how the, how the, the small text, look at the small text. It's the same as the team name. It's not the coach name. <laughs> All right, one turn left for MVS. Not a whole lot to do. They'll bash up this Elvin line, and then they'll be on offense to start the second half. They'll be down at least one player. We'll get another opportunity here to re-roll uh, their number 10 skink. Why I think this is good enough, unless, unless uh, a, he gets a timeout and then he gains a, a gains a turn. Nope. Ball's landing shallow here. Probably puts it in the hands of number seven. 
Tries to get some SGP. Turn eight. Time to block this line down, see if he can get some removals going into the second half here. Remember, the odds of Flint coming back have increased dramatically. Or how to, how to phrase it. The odds of Flint being available for the beginning of the second half have increased dramatically due to getting two rolls here. So Maximum Boncito is looking for every opportunity to take the player down. <laughs> Starting right off with the Blitz. Two Eye Blitz gets a pal. Let's see if he gets that nine plus. He's got it for Farmer. Does he get a removal? He doesn't, just gets a stun. Second two die block, that's not gonna work. He'll spend his final reroll here. What? <laughs> why? Why not? I don't understand why he didn't spend the reroll. <laughs> All right, one to zero the score. MVS will be on offense here. They did get back. They're knocked out Skink. And the knocked out Elf is going to come back onto the pitch as well. It's 11 v 10 on the pitch in favor of the real American heroes. Real American heroes looking to screen out the lizards. They don't want the same game to end in a draw. going to stay the same yet again deep kick by the real american heroes the ball's all the way in mbs's end zone and they'll start this second drive they'll get three blocks on the line they'll probably want to move players into position first to protect the ball so they're up against a fairly fast team so they'll probably pull a player back pull a player back maybe Maybe bring him here or something, or maybe here. Uh, then take his blocks. Then pick up the ball. What if it... Two eye block. He's going to get the knockdown here against number eight. Doesn't break armor. To get another two die block, it's a push here. Oh, I don't like how the dice get bigger as you zoom away. I don't like that. It's like, I, I don't even know how to describe that behavior. Like, look at that. I, I don't, I don't know what that is. Like, what is happening? <laughs> it's like the, it's like the angle changes on the, on the, Action wheel and the dice. I don't know, it's strange. Another two die block gets the knockdown here. Knockdown, push, knockdown. No armor breaks. Haha, <laughs> it's like Loops says it only happens with blue marble dice. <laughs> 13 seconds left on the clock here. Wants to pull back some sort of protective line, some protective wall, lest an elf were to sneak through the offense. Two die blitz here. It's a push result. Maximum Von Cito into bonus time once more. Four minutes, 20 seconds left on the bonus time clock for the team. Going for the ball, pick up, three plus pick up. 
Good pickup. Scary pickup when it's in the end zone there. <laughs> you don't want it to scatter out of bounds and then get tossed to your opponent. Three minutes, 30 seconds left on the clock. Still activating players. Left his left his runner in the end zone. He had three more spaces to move with him. Didn't move him forward. Turn nine for the Real American Heroes now. Sorry, I was looking, I was, I was looking up information about the input latency. Just to make sure it wasn't uh, wasn't uh, something I was fearing. It was not. At least allegedly, it's not. I would be very interested to know. No, I wouldn't. I would be, but I don't want to say. <laughs> For fear of angering. <laughs> angering people <laughs> with certain connections. <laughs> Dude, I block here. <laughs> He's going to get the knockdown on number four. I would be very interested to see uh, individual coaches uh, uh latency figures like a ping test to uh, both the servers and their opponent Well, it's not the speed, right? It's not the speed that's the problem. It's the latency that's the problem. And uh, I, I wonder, I wonder if, um, well, I, I wonder, I, I wonder if it's an acknowledgement problem or if it's like a jitter problem. to double pal blitz going skin hunting here Zartan going skin he's not a real American hero he's a, he's a mercenary he's a mercenary yeah. got a KO here well done Right, but that that's why I, I that's why I would be very interested to see to see latency numbers like peer to peer. I don't know what that means. I don't know two million two milliseconds to to DC to District of Columbia? What does that mean? Uh, that's not true. It is peer to peer. It, it does. It, the the actions get reconciled on the server, but there there is a host. There is a a host player and a guest player. Yeah. 
Yeah, but that's like that's like you're going to like a like a you know a thing like like a like a server that's meant for that. So that's the latency to that's going to be pretty small. Lee says, I wonder if there's a separate server for these custom leagues. No, they're they're hosted on your machine. Like you're you know, there's a there's a host player and they're basically hosting the game, and then their opponents connecting to them. There aren't tools in game to test the connection, no, but um I mean to be clear, I'm not I'm not suggesting any action be taken. I'm just sort of uh, contemplating <laughs> bug fixes, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I would be interested to, to see, like, you know, if 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 two players, if two coaches were going to compete against each other, I, I'd love to see uh, ping results between them. And I'm not really interested in the speed there. I'm interested in the the input latency and to see I'm interested to see two things one is it large consistently or two does it jump up inconsistently either of those I could see being a potential problem and then I'd like to see the same thing to a cyanide game studio or a cyanide game server as well pontificating <laughs> spitballing <laughs> Ellen Bruce says, that's how, that was how BB1 was, and there was a lot of client-side cheating. I thought they all moved to server-side in BB2 because of that. I, I, to be fair, I, I don't know the intricacies of, of the network architecture here, uh, but I feel, I, I feel, I, I shouldn't say I feel confident. I don't, want, I don't want to present myself as an authority on Blood Bowl 3, but uh, I am of the impression that the games are hosted and, the, and, and reconciled server-side. So the server's not running the game, in my opinion. <laughs> or not even my opinion, that is my impression. Turn 10 for the real American heroes. <laughs> I don't even know what happened there. I just kept hearing the clock tick down. <laughs> These are these are two games where we've had significant input latency, um, but we also had we had one, one, two, three games, four games. We've had four games where the input latency was fine. So that suggests that suggests that that suggests there's that suggests that um, there isn't a common problem, right? There there isn't a commonality that is the problem. Of course, it could be something else. It could be like maybe, maybe the server these past couple of days has been janky or something like that. That is also an issue for, or a potential. I mean, you could be right. You could be right. Thirty-five seconds left in the turn ten for the real American heroes. Who I I'm still they're not all they're not all real American heroes. You've got Destro, you've got Zartan, two die block on the number five blocker. It's gonna get a push result out of this. You've got Major Blood. Come on, come on, real American heroes.
Ball in the hands of the number eight skink right at the line of scrimmage. Caged up with those Saruses. That's what you want to do with this lizard team. You have these high strength Saruses, leverage them on your cage. It'll be very, very tough for your opponent to stop this cage. They'll have to dedicate a whole lot to stopping your cage. They'll probably instead, and you can see uh, Dead Fred trying to do this here. Instead, they'll want to reposition and just stop your forward movement. So they'll play a game like they're playing against a Dwarven team. They want to hold them to a space to turn, hold them to a blitz. He's setting up these columns here. So now he's covering this, uh, this much pitch and stopping this cage dead in its tracks. They'd have to move to the left or the right here. Otherwise, he'd have to get, dedicate so much to the cage break that MVS, uh, just one gap, you know, just one block or blitz back and the ball carrier just zoops away. Zoop. I stand up blitz here gets a pal against Flint playing pressure on the left side of this this contingent this offensive contingent can he get a nine plus out of this it's so hard with early lizard teams early early TV early TV lizard teams are not bad at all it's just they're skillless and that can be that can be tricky um, or I guess by comparison it's tricky right like once you start to get TV on them and you start to get block on those Saruses that it's much easier to just start hammering people into the dirt. <laughs> I think somebody's forgotten about a skink. <laughs> Two die block against Hawk. Gonna get the knockdown here. Really wants to get a removal. You always want to get a removal. But the problem against these, these elves is they're so fast, the three MA to stand up means they still get a movement of four. That's the normal movement for my lineman. <laughs> Shuttles the ball laterally to the left a little bit. Ball still on the opposing two yard line. Far Saurus cage. Huh. Huh. <laughs> no, but that would be great. <laughs> Jerry Wilkes says, What a forgotten player named Doug? <laughs> Oh, filling in this cage here. He can get more use out of these block out of these sarses, in my opinion, if he either he, he wants to keep them by grouping them all up in the here, it, it allows the defense to really uh close in on this offense and shut it down. Fails the dodge here. He's thinking about the final reroll or failed the uh the rush. Doesn't spend it, got half problem. That's the tricky thing with that trying to figure out the reroll on a skink. If you fail a reroll like that and the reroll doesn't matter for your play, oh, then, then what do you do, right? Do you risk losing the skink? Broke armor, he spent the apothecary, the skink is now stunned and thankfully stays on the pitch. Turn 11 now for the Real American Heroes. I'm pretty sure it was done. I'm pretty sure it was done. <laughs> we 
Real American Heroes in the lead here, one to zero. They still have both their rerolls. Maximum Boncito down to one reroll for the game. If this game ends in a draw, the coaches, uh, due to the <laughs> due to the lack of league management tools, the coaches have been instructed to pass through the resulting overtime. Uh, but uh, uh, draws are allowed in regular play. Real American Heroes repositioning this defense here. And you can see he's trying to shut down this offense exactly as described. Still has Flint to stand up. He might be thinking about dodging Flint. Just 1 minute 42 seconds left in bonus time for the Real American Heroes. One die block against Brewmeister Smith gets the knockdown thanks to the block skill. There's that stand up. Is he gonna dodge Flint away? Or does he wanna keep keep the number four blocker marked? Blitz under a minute in bonus time. One die blitz with the block save. Got the pal. Yeah. And then fail the two plus dodge here. <laughs> Is he going to spend a reroll? He does not. Zartan's going to stand the pitch. That'll be a turnover. And now, turn 12 for MVS. Oh, the clock's, the clock's stuck. <laughs> 34 seconds left in bonus time for MVS. 19 seconds left for Real American Heroes. Twelve. <laughs> Depot says, "Room where this game was broke." Pepperidge Farm remembers. Man, I, I just I feel I feel bad. <laughs> I just really feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad for everyone listening to this clock. I feel bad for the coaches who are just trying to perform their actions. Yeah, I, again, we've had two games with this, that so that's that doesn't mean anything. Like it doesn't, like it could just be, it could be temporal, right? It could be the fact that something's going on with the servers and it's the weekend, right? Or it's Monday, but you get my point. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it, it doesn't mean anything, but it's still unfortunate. 10 seconds left. MVS trying to cage up here on turn 12, but they're, they're back on their own four-yard line. 
<laughs> That's true. At least there isn't an endless chainsaw. That is very true. <laughs> we'll take this opportunity to remember that Blood Bowl 3, or Blood Bowl 2, was not without its bugs. <laughs> Two-Eye Black got the pal here against Destro. Really praying to Nuffle here that he gets some sort of removal. Nope. <laughs> no removal. Boy. He only has five seconds left. He's got a gap on the back corner of his cage. He's got a skink in the backfield. Fills in the gap with the Saurus just in the nick of time. He is playing a man down. I think he's just forgotten about the uh, number 11 skink. Blue Jay Streams, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for the raid. Minute 35 with this insufferable <laughs> stuck clock. <laughs> Left with no action from Real American Heroes, really. Applying a lot of pressure. Really, they're just trying to stop this cage. Maximum Boncito grouping up so tightly here. Uh, as predicted, the Real American Heroes descended upon this offense and they just trying to stop forward movement. They are in the lead. They want to hold on to the lead for this uh, upcoming final quarter. They're going to get the pal here against Ming the Merciless. Can they get that massive 10 plus? Break armor. Tough to remove the armor of these Sarises, Sarsises, Sarai. Two die block gets the knockdown on Brewmeister Smith. Looking for a 10 plus here as well. Doesn't break armor. 10 seconds left on the clock. Probably tries to reset his defense as best as he can. Blue Jay Streams, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for the raid. Very much appreciated. Real American Heroes into bonus time. They're down to 10 seconds on the bonus clock. Trying to keep the pressure on this cage. Trying to stop its forward movement. Doesn't want to go base to base with these Sar uh, Sarsises with Saurus's. Fourth quarter begins. Maximum Von Cito. Turn 13. They're down by a touchdown. They seem to have forgotten about this poor skink <laughs> all the way back <laughs> on their own end zone. They've got this tight four-point cage here. It's going to be tough to move this cage. These Saurus's have an AG of five plus. They don't dodge. Thirty seconds. Already down on the clock. No bonus time left for MBS. We're trying to figure out what to do, where to go. Might try to open up a hole against Hawk here. Doesn't really open a hole, I suppose. Real tough for this lizard cage to move forward against these elves. If they take a mark on the wrong side. So they can't take a mark, say, this way. Right? Can't take a mark this way because this elf dodge is a two plus. Wow, I can draw really well. That elf dodge is a two plus. So unlike this, this elven team that can mark, uh, say, 
So he could come in here and mark here, and that's a good mark because this dodge is an 11 million plus. <laughs> so that, that Sars isn't really getting away unless he blitzes away. Two-Dive Blitz gets a push here with 10 seconds left on the clock. Maximum Boncito probably not getting any movement on this turn. Skinks can pass, yes. Skinks have a, a three plus, four plus. <laughs> if I taught you anything last season, it's that Sarses are dodging champions. <laughs> Every turn that this cage doesn't move is a turn that's a, that's a small win in Dead Fred's books. Real American Heroes now turn 13. They're up one to zero. Oh, I feel real bad about these input latency problems. Oh, oh it just kills me. <laughs> I, know it has, I know I didn't do it, but I, I feel guilty. <laughs> Real American heroes. Number 10 Skink shot down pit pass, and now he's, he's effectively uh, sequestered here. This is a good mark. This means every dodge by this Skink is going to be a minus one dodge and then a positive dodge after that. So two dodges required for the skink. Unless it gets lucky on a blitz. Good two plus dodge over in the left wide zone by Zartan. Not a real American hero. A real mercenary with a cool camouflage gimmick. <laughs> the Dread knocks. Number eight lineman moves in to Mark. Father Lancaster Marin. Here comes the Blitz. Two die Blitz gets the knockdown. Massive 10 plus to break armor. But remember, even the knockdown is cutting that MA in half. It's three to stand up, so that MA of six becomes an MA of three next turn. Pastel de Carne says, Skink is stunting, so Whoa! Big removal on the Saurus. Not every day you break Saurus armor, but today is that day thrice over, I believe. Pastel Licardi says, Skink to stunt day is stunty, so three plus anyway, isn't it? I wonder if the elves go for a four plus cage dive. Maybe, yeah, maybe so. Signor's loop, very much, very much worried about the Saurus. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> Dude, I'm blocking against Zartan. Gets, uh, gets the knockdown here. He needs a 9 plus to break armor. You're very, you're very welcome, Sigurd's Loop. <laughs> we'll keep you apprised of the health of all of your fellow lizards. <laughs> Three turns left for MVS to try to score to tie this game. They've got a hole if they move their Saurus, and they did. Time to shuttle these players through, but he only has 35 seconds left, and it is killing me to know that it is not the player's fault. Oh. It is breaking my heart. <laughs> it is absolutely breaking my heart. I can feel, I can feel Malik furiously clicking that mouse. <laughs> oh, man. It's gonna end the ball on the opposing eight yard line. Oh, this cage is gonna be marked twice over. Oh, I don't like that. Got the cage in place here, but marked. The backside of this cage marked. Turn 14 now for the Real American Heroes. 
Two turns. Two turns to stop the score. Can they do it? This defense now behind this cage. This skink in scoring position. One rush would do it. Beaver asked, you know what they were doing about overtime. What do you mean? This guy. Ah, oh, this guy. How you doing, buddy? How you feeling? How you feeling? <laughs> you doing all right? <laughs> you doing good? Feeling good? <laughs> you need some juice? <laughs> Oh no, failed the two plus dodge here. He's gonna have to re-roll this. Yeah. 84, or excuse me, 82 plus. Your positive dodges might be a two plus. Oh no. Rolled a skull here on the one die block. He's gonna probably spend his final re-roll here. You roll enough of those dodges, you'll fail them. It's not like we're talking about four dice or three dice or even two dice. One die. It's not It's not uh, as infrequent as you think. Gets the knockdown here after the final reroll is spent. SP Beaver says, uh, are they playing overtime or accepting the draw? Uh, they've been instructed to accept the draw. Um, so that, that should they should just uh, click through OT. And uh, <laughs> we've learned our lesson <laughs> for, <laughs> for the second half of this competition. <laughs> Turn 15 for MVS now. Hopefully that won't happen again for the rest of the season. Growing pains. Blood Bowl 3 growing pains. One rush. They have the reroll to tie this game. They give up. Oh, boy. Takes the block. Two die block. Didn't want to get the dodge. Fair enough. Two turns for the Selvin team to score. They can do it. <laughs> Poop Polish says, if only the people I work with followed instructions. <laughs> one rush. One rush will do it. There it is. One to one the score. Well done by Malik. Yes, that's real American heroes twice. <laughs> watch, watch here. <laughs> oh, that annoys me. <laughs> that, that small little bug annoys me. <laughs> but you know what? I'm a software engineer. I get it. <laughs> that's very low on the totem pole. <laughs> Maximum Von Cito will be down three players. They'll have eight players on the pitch to defend for two turns. They'll get one turn to take actions. That means their formation here is going to be crucial to stop the score and prevent the Real American Heroes from potentially winning this game. They're going to have a full 11 player roster. <laughs> right? Right? It's like, oh, what a ridiculous bug. And also, how many times have I done something similar. <laughs> oh, if I had a nickel. <laughs> plus, plus often it's not it's not just a simple like oopsie. It's like you're building on top of like architecture that was designed for something and then halfway through development that architecture like significantly shifted and you're like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> How do I make this work? <laughs> three player defensive line here, two linebackers in the Saruses and three players in the secondary for what is very well, uh, almost assuredly going to be the final drive of this game. Real 
American Heroes will have their chance at turn 15 and then turn 16 will finish out this game. One to one the score now. Real American Heroes crucially have no rerolls left. Remember, that reroll, that team reroll, significantly changes the odds of things. Significantly. If you have a 50 50 chance, right? If you have a coin toss and you need a tails, you flip it, there's a 50% chance you get tails. But if you get to flip it twice, there's a 75% chance that you will flip tails at least once. Those are huge differences. A D6 is only six faces, and that means that the difference between rolling that die once and twice is, is deceptively large. So the odds for a lot of his actions now have changed dramatically. And he'll have to keep that in mind when he's determining his action order. Here's the kickoff. Strong on the right side for this offense here. They're going to commit to the right side to try to score. Shallow kick is not, <laughs> not really <laughs> what Maximum Vonsito wanted, but it's on the side that they wanted it on. So they naturally kick to the left wide zone. The ball ends up on the opposing four yard line. Real American Heroes now with a minute 50 left on the clock and turn 15 they have to end this turn in scoring position i imagine they're going to try to blitz down this skink try to blitz down this skink and uh set up some players perhaps you know here 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 or here or something try to control this lane here and then run down this in turn 16. Sets up the assist. Doesn't declare the blitz with number three. He's gonna take the blitz here. Wow. Gets the three die blitz, gets the pal on number 10. This would be a great removal. Needs an eight plus. Breaks armor! That's a great armor break. No matter the result, got the stun. That's effectively gonna remove this player from the game. Well done by the Real American Heroes. Take a mark on that Saris. Remember that Saris is going nowhere unless he blitzes through. And MBS is not going to want to do that. Thirty-six seconds left. He's got to get on this ball and he's got to get it to where he wants it to be. Oh, you can bet Dead Fred is. Oh, my heart is breaking. I know, I know he's clicking buttons. <laughs> I can feel it. I can feel it in my soul. Oh, he has no time, no bonus time left. 15 seconds. Oh, Nuffle, please let him pick this ball up. There's the pickup. Oh, what on earth was that pass? What was that pass? Short pass to somebody, 50-50 pass fails. He's not out of it, but man, oh, oh man, I, oh God, I feel gross. <laughs> I feel gross. I feel gross because I know both these coaches are not dilly dallying. Oh. Turn 16 for Maximum Vonsito. Yeah, go ahead and blitz him. Oh, spend that reroll, buddy. <laughs> or he could go for the both down, I suppose, but probably wants to take a couple more blocks here. You have the reroll, yeah. Unless you really, really wanted to guarantee the down there, but you got it here. I mean, look at this one action, we're already down to a minute nine. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Got the knockdown there, that's huge for MVS. <laughs> wow, that, uh, I don't think, <laughs> really risking his skink there, <laughs> but he does have a mark on the ball. <laughs> oh boy, all right. All right, well, he's going to have to go in for the pass. It's going to have to be quite the pass. Probably the number eight here to hand off to uh, Snake Eyes. No rerolls for Dead Fred.
Is he going to try to blitz the skink away first is the question. I imagine he will. TGF. Oh, boy. It's such a tough call. Because if he goes in with Tomax here, picks up the ball, that's one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So that's a long pass to number eight. Yeah, just going to go for the pickup. Good pickup. Three plus pickup. Dodge away from the pass. Yeah. I still think there's an interception attempt from, th from this spot. Or a pass interference attempt, I should say. So the range ruler is basically two squares wide, but it covers like the center square and then half of half of the other two squares. Yeah. GFI, or, oh, sorry, he rushed to try to avoid the pass interference roll. One, two, one, two, still a long pass. Long pass to number eight. Good luck, Joes. Good luck, Flint. Ah, oh, no! <laughs> Tried to make it. A short pass didn't work out. This game's gonna end in a draw one to one. These coaches are gonna click through OT here because the, uh, the competition is misconfigured. <laughs> it's all right. One to one, the final score. Oh boy, what a game! What a game! SP Weaver, if you can do me a favor, if you go to Discord and just remind the coaches that they're gonna click through here. One to one, the final, the click through these final eight turns. Uh, the rules of our league, if you're new to the league, the rules of the league are there are three open competitions and one invitational. The open competitions are open to anyone. Um, and the rules are written in such a way that you can miss a competition. You can miss two competitions and still, and still have a good shot at making our championship tournament. In fact, we had a coach, uh, Wenger, do just that. Uh, he missed the first two competitions came in in the dungeon bowl advanced to the blood bowl which is our championship competition and uh, had a good good showing there um and uh in regular play ties are allowed in each competition the top four teams will advance to a simple a single elimination bracket there are no ties allowed at that point uh the winners of each competition will be invited to the blood bowl and the runners up also get invited in a lower bracket they uh, face each other in a lower bracket. The winner of that will advance to the upper bracket in the Blood Bowl and play the play the champions of the season. Um, in rare instances, there might be the third place teams that make it to the Blood Bowl as well. Uh, but the, the the competition or the uh, the league is set up uh, really to we just we just love Blood Bowl, man. <laughs> we love playing Blood Bowl. We wanted to set it up in such a way that you know we know life gets in the way, so we wanted to have a way where you know joining the league was not a huge commitment like you just you play some games you have some fun and you can remain competitive uh without dedicating your life to it so um yeah i, I love man i love this game so much it's such a fun game right the more you play it the more you realize like when you're new to blood bowl you say oh there's a bunch of dice and, and then you curse the dice you go oh oh skin's all luck and then you start to realize it's not it's not about luck right it's about luck mitigation it's it's about uh, knowing uh, not just probabilities, but there's all these interactions with races and positionals and team compositions and tactics and strategy. And you have so much agency in this game. I always liken it to a fighting game. There's so much agency, so much creativity to play the way you want to play, to figure out your own path to success. It is so much fun to watch a really good coach go out and be good. And it's so much fun to watch a new coach learn the game and get better and and figure out uh ways to be successful and uh, uh i mean that's that's in a nutshell everything i love about gaming like blood bowl encompasses everything i love about gaming i i love sharing uh this stuff i love playing this stuff i love watching this stuff uh what a what a brilliant game i love it so much and then there's the whole hobby aspect i'm not too much into the hobby stuff myself but i i adore uh i adore it when other players are we have a coach, uh, Ian. Uh, he always showing off his his figures, his models. Uh, just does a stellar job with it, man. Man, I love this game. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> I went to Gen Con one year. I saw this amazing Blood Bowl stadium somebody built. 
Oh, it was so rad. It was so rad. There should not be actions taken here. Not sure what's going on. That's right, where else do you get to see elves knock out giant lizards? I mean, this is indicative of the input latency here, right? Like, it's taking 10 seconds to click through. Ah, uh, my heart breaks. Ah, uh, I'm so sorry to these two coaches. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, this is our first, this is our first season of Blood Bowl 3. The, the League tools aren't quite there yet. Um, Cyanite's put in a lot of work in the last year, but uh, League, still, League tools are still missing, so uh, we're still... We're still getting our feet, getting our sea legs. <laughs> and so, so this uh, first half of the competition has been uh, misconfigured to allow OT. It really shouldn't. So the coaches click through the OT. Uh, and then we take care of it on the back end. And there's the game. It's going to declare a winner, but this game's going to end one to one. Second draw of the week here in week one of this competition. Week one of the season, in fact. Let's see how many blocks were done. Not not I mean, a decent amount, you know, 50 blocks even. Uh, not bad, but look at the number of injuries sustained by MVS 11. That's a lot. Real American Heroes put in the work. SPP for the evening. Seven for Maximum Boncito and uh, thir uh, not 13, 11 for the Real American Heroes. Uh, not a bad pickup. Not the massive haul we saw earlier this week. <laughs> Real Elite One, welcome to the stream. Hi there, it's been a while since I've played Blood Bowl or even happened here. How's the games going? Games going great. I love Blood Bowl. <laughs> I love Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl 3 uh, uses the new rulebook, the LRB, I'm uh, sorry, not the LRB, the uh, Blood Bowl 2020 rulebook. So brand new rules for everyone. We've got a brand new game client uh, and we're, 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 <laughs> we're working out the issues with the game client. But uh, so far, I would say, I would say everything, not 80% good. Uh, I've had a blast with it. <laughs> We've got lots more games to come. Uh, let's take a look at the standings before we take a look at the schedule. So at the end of week one, nuffle to see here. I want to be like Doug and juxtapose juggernauts. All tied for first place. Clypheus, Richard Cranium, and War Horseman. Clypheus, the season two champion. You can see Doug the Minotaur there. His, uh, he's the current reigning champion, his orc team. Right Skull, the White Skull Windbreakers are uh, here for this season, at least this competition. Um, and that's it for week one. So uh, week two is... Uh, is going to get underway shortly. It'll get underway tomorrow, in fact. And coaches will begin to schedule their games tomorrow. And when those games get scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Blue Sky, Twitter and Facebook. You can watch previous games on our YouTube channel as well play Blood Bowl, man. Like, Blood Bowl is so much fun, man. <laughs> like, it is so, so, so fun. Like, where, where else can you, where, here, here, where else can you be a team of dead presidents <laughs> who punch an elf in the face and then resurrect that elf to play for your team. What a fun game this is. You can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 3 on Steam, the Epic Game Store, PlayStation on Xbox, and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store until week two, everyone. Take care and enjoy the rest of your Monday evening.